Hello, Internet! Today I want to show you how I fail, how I fail miserably when I want to discover new code. Now, I don't know about you, but I love TensorFlow as a platform, a technology platform, and today's topic is about graph neural networks. So I found an article in November 18, 2021, in a TensorFlow blog where they say, hey, today we're excited to release a new library. And it is called the TensorFlow Graph Neural Network Library to make it easy to work with graph structured data using TensorFlow. Now, this is great because I remember that I took uh, about half a year, a quarter of a year ago, I took some courses. And a course I can really recommend to you is from Stanford Online. And then the label is CS224W for winter, I suppose. And it is called Machine Learning with Graphs 2021. And there's a series of, I don't know, 15 lectures, I suppose, and more than 30 hours. So if you're really interested in graph neural network, this is the course I would highly recommend uh, to find out about all mathematical uh, and data science specifics if you want to operate with this. But I've chosen here a representation where you might say, why do I need a graph? I already have a vision neural network and I also have a sequence-based neural network that's analyzing text and speech. So what the hell? Why do I need another complexity of graph structure? And I think this is worth mentioning. So the first idea is if you have images, you have a perfect grid and you have input layer, hidden layers, whatever you know about it, and you have defined structured. And within a text, you have more or less a linear structure of words. Words follow words. You have a linear structure and you just have to find the localized embedding of those words. Now, a graph, a graph is a little bit different. A graph has some arbitrary size and some complex topological structure. And this is the fascinating thing in graph neural networks. You have no fixed node ordering. You have no reference points. Of course, you're operating a non-Euclidean manifold and so on. So you see, coming from this simple case of images with a grid structure, and from NLP with a sequence linear structure, now suddenly we want to apply our knowledge on these two basic cases to a more complex case here on a graph neural network. And you are familiar then if you are talking, talking about machine learning algorithms for predictions on graphs, it is also called geometric deep learning, but this would be the topic for another video, for another very long video. So let's focus on graph neural networks, basic functionality. Of course, if you're new to this and you say, I don't want to spend 30 to 50 hours learning about it, I think a very nice starting point for you is here uh, from YouTube, Fundamental Ideas About GNN. I found a video from September 2020 where I think there's a very nice introduction to understanding graph neural networks, and I would recommend this to you. And I will use here a presentation where we have here a very simple graph. A graph consists of some nodes and of some edges connecting nodes or not connecting nodes together. And you have now a representation of a graph. And what you want is to find a suitable representation of the graph data for your specific task. And you can either, your task can either be that you say, hey, I want my graph, uh, my task to be a node label prediction or a link prediction. For example, if you are watching Netflix, you know that after having watched some Netflix, you will get recommendation presented to you. And this is example, if you think about notes like movies that you already watched, and uh, Netflix has, of course, a GNN working in the background. And this link says, hey, if he already watched or she watched all of these movies, maybe they are interested also watching this particular movie next time. So this could be a link prediction. Or if you want to have some note uh, feature prediction, you can say, I don't know, 
he is living in this community, he is driving this car, he is friends with this and this person, uh, so maybe he would be interested in a membership of this particular club, book club, golf club, whatever you want. So this would be a node feature prediction. And I think graph, on the one hand, try to channelize objects such as a grid or a sequence like a topological structure in a more complex general object. And of course, the reason why we do it is we want to find new representation, new embeddings. And these embeddings we will use to do predictions, like I showed you with Netflix, or if people are interested to find new membership. So giving a higher complexity, of course, the first step that we want to do is to apply the basics that we already know. And no, this is not it. This is not it. Gee, where's the visual? Where's the visual? Yeah, for example, here you have the, a normal neural network where you have some, some layers, some hidden layers. You have some very simple output. And if you have now a graph data as an input, let's jump and see. Yeah, we have now here a graph in a neural network. You want to do have a, a learning, set up a learning, I don't know, with thousand sets of graphs where you teach a, a specific neural network on a particular task. And then you ask, hey, this is now the size of another molecule. Or the si yeah, you can think about this as molecule and you want to find out, for example, hey, is there any way, I don't know, does it inhibit E. coli, for example, and you present the model, I don't know, 100 substances with the molecular structure that does inhibit E. coli, and now you present them a new molecule or a set of 1,000 new molecules, and you say, hey, what's the probability that this will indeed inhibit E. coli? So you can find out new chemical structure, new drugs, new structures of the drugs. And I think uh, the chemical success story of GNN is one of its most prominent, one of the most famous success stories to GNNs. But of course, non-Euclidean grid, you know, representation learning, and we have here the node level embedding, so graph knowledge structure whatsoever. And we want to do uh, some predictions. Now, the interesting thing is you have up until now, I use, for example, PyTorch, Geometric. There is, if you go here on Understanding Graph Neural Networks, you have a very nice Colab nat notebook for you ready to start. And you can download your notebook, you sign in, and you can execute a notebook. You can work with PyTorch Geometric. But of course, I would be interested to learn about the new TensorFlow Graph Neural Networks application, this new library that uh, Google TensorFlow published in November 18, 2021. So next step, what I want to show you. Yes, graph neural networks. And we were saying that this is the general level. So we want to learn from the simple levels like vision or speech that we already know, where, for example, uh, transformer models like BERT are really applied successfully. And there is a very particular form of graph neural network that is also operating with a transformer based. And there's a very nice presentation by one of the founders of this uh, transformer based graph neural network structure, Willy Kovic. And he is giving a, a, an introduction to graph neural networks from June 2021. I would recommend this YouTube video. Have a look at it. He gives a very general introduction. He shows you graph data processing. He tells you uh, there was some idea in the very early days, of course, coming from vision to apply a convolution layer also to the graph structure to have here the locality preserved, summed up. So everything you know about vision and convolution layers for vision analysis, they applied here also for, for the graph convolutional layer. And graph convolutions, graph convolutions, classification tasks I already told you, next step would be 
yeah, message passing neural networks. This was interesting because the idea here is that from node to node, you pass a message along the established links between the nodes. And the complete mathematical theory you have, of course, in Stanford Online, there's hours and hours of the theory behind it. Here you have a summary. Uh, but what you can say is that you have the information of the node, of the node features, and of the links are now encoded, are now embedded, if you want, aggregated uh, with this message passage functions where you have then a node where you can aggregate all messages flowing in on this node and you can calculate a new state of this neural network. And the female thing that why I chosen him is because one of the co-authors of GUT. And as I told you, this is a self-attention mechanism, a transformer mechanism. He also applied to a graph attention network. So this is it. We have the convolution network. We have the message passing neural network for graphs. And we have the graph attention networks. Just to give you an idea, you can have all the details later. What I have here, this is not of interest. Yeah, if you want to know about successive challenges and next step, if we are now entering the area of deep learning on graphs, there is from September 2020, a little bit old, but still interesting uh, presentation from Michael Bronstein. Uh, I would recommend this if you're interested in what's going on, what will be the evolution, the road to the future, and where you can apply this, where you have the most interesting success stories and whatsoever. Yeah, of course, if you're interested in the current, let's say PyTorch library environment, uh, you have PyTorch Geometric. This is a very nice representation and a very nice presentation of the features of the software. And if you're <laughs> interested, <laughs> and this may be a, a little bit strange, but you can think of transformers as graph neural networks. And there's a really interesting, funny article about this in the gradient, talking about representation learning for NLP. And there's a very nice, very interesting argumentation build up. <laughs> Uh, if you're interested in this, I will leave the link to this article for you in the description of this video. You might say, okay, so, so here we are. Now that you have talked to us about all the different things, we are here about how do you learn? What about the new TensorFlow library on graph neural networks? And what we know up until now is that's already 13 minutes into this video. So I suppose this will be a two part video but here we have of course in Keras we already have some node classification with graph neural networks and there's from June 2021 there's the implementation of a graph neural model predicting the topic of a scientific paper given its citations and you can see here the code but I think this will be the topic of the next video because for a short introduction about graph neural networks what the heck is a graph neural network why do we need it why do we apply it and still answered where the hell is tensorflow new graph neural networks library how to apply it and what is it well i hope we will find out about it in the next video <laughs> thank you and until then see you